this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Ooh, this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Hi everyone, I'm Pastor Jess. We are going to celebrate Black History Month by learning more about the roots of black music in America. We're going to begin at the very beginning, when black people were kidnapped from Africa and sold as slaves all over the American colonies. These people brought with them the rich songs and cultures of their homelands and created new songs here during their enslavement. These first songs that were sung by enslaved people are called spirituals. Many black people were forced to convert to Christianity by their enslavers. But while the white people were focusing on the parts of the Bible that say, slaves obey your masters, black folks heard the messages of liberation and freedom. Often the words or lyrics of spirituals are, as the name suggests, about religious things. Many refer to Old Testament stories when the Israelites were enslaved in Egypt or Babylon and they were separated from their homes praying for freedom. As you can imagine, those stories felt very familiar to enslaved black people. Spirituals were sung and taught by ear, meaning that they weren't written down the way that most music is today. This led to a lot of different versions of the same songs People sang while they worked, but not necessarily in a peppy, whistle-while-you-work kind of way. The singing of songs helped them to endure. The formerly enslaved black leader, Frederick Douglass, warned that, The songs of the slave represent the sorrows rather than the joys of his heart, and he is relieved by them only as an aching heart is relieved by its tears. Slaves sing more to make themselves happy than to express their happiness. Spirituals were sometimes codes or secret messages. Nat Turner used steal away to Jesus as a signal to summon folks to a slave revolt. And Harriet Tubman is said to have used wade in the water to remind people hoping to escape slavery via the Underground Railroad to walk in the creeks and streams so their scent might be hidden. Spirituals were used to communicate all sorts of messages in a time when black people did not have the freedom to organize themselves. In 1865, the end of the Civil War brought about the end of slavery in the United States. But it didn't end these songs. Spirituals got a new life through musicians like Harry T. Burley, who helped bring spirituals to a much wider audience by writing arrangements for soloists and choirs. The Fisk University Jubilee Singers were also instrumental in bringing spirituals to the White House and to all of Europe shortly after the end of the Civil War. Slavery had thankfully ended, but spirituals were here to stay. Singers like Mahalia Jackson continued to bring spirituals to the general public, topping billboard charts and singing at high-profile events like John F. Kennedy's inauguration and Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s funeral. The spiritual forms the basis of all the music we'll be exploring this month as we celebrate black history and the roots of black music in America. This little light of mine I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.